if you're passionate, it'll give back in spades, I think. If you've decided it's what you want to do, then yeah, if you give it at all, it's, it's a great career. You get to travel, you get to be creative, you get to work with lots of wild and wonderful people. Today on Dirty Linen, we are heading north to Mwilliam Bar and Bistro Livy, a new restaurant where the chef is Ewan Crawford. Ewan was uh, previously at Movida in Melbourne, so he's probably cooked some of my favourite morsels. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be chatting to him about what he's up to now. Ewan, welcome to Dirty Linen. Thanks for having me. How so? Bistro Livy opened in Feb, was swiftly flooded, and then that's a close. Um, tell me a little bit about your journey there. Yeah, so um, I spent the last prior to 2021, I spent the last 11 years at um, Movida. Um, some my very fond memories there, and learned a lot from. Frank and all the chefs that passed through there over the time. Um, and then, yeah, 2021 moved to the Northern Rivers and um, sort of set about looking for a place um, of our own. Um, Nikki uh, was front of house manager at Movida and her sister Danny was already up here and she had worked at um, Carlton Wine Room and Gertrude Street in a tecker in the kitchen. Um, yeah, and we sort of looking for a place in the Northern Rivers and um, were priced out of sort of Brunswick Heads and um, places like that. So we finally found a spot in Mwollomba in an old Art Deco um, building in the Mwollomba Arts Precinct. And, yeah, we took over that in... Sort of September 21, and um, did a bit of a makeover of the space, and finally opened in January uh, last weekend of January 22. And yeah, we got a month's worth of trading in, and um, yeah, and then the the, the rain came and um, <laughs> quickly washed all that away. Um, and yeah, so we rebuilt in, uh, it took about five weeks for us to reopen. Um, and only last week we sort of got it back to where we were in January. Yeah. Wow. That's quite a start to life as an independent restaurant in a regional town. I mean, I mean, I'd love to, yeah, just hear about the that emotional journey. But I mean, tell us what you're aiming to do at Bistro Livy. I've only heard fantastic things about the food and and the overall approach. But give us a bit of an insight into what the project is there. Thank you. Um, I guess we're we're just trying to do simple simple bistro food. Um, yeah, showcasing. I mean, there's some of the beautiful produce that they they have up here. Um, We're very lucky to be um, tapping into some great farmers, um, mainly in the veg and seafood. Um, Yeah, we spend a lot of time at the markets, um, uh, New Brighton, um, Mwollomba and Byron Market each week. And we just sort of pick the eyes out of the um, produce there and, um, yeah, and then we've sort of made some good connections with some fishermen up here and down in Coffs and, um, yeah, we're just trying to keep it as simple as possible. We do a few ingredients on the plate and um, not overly complicated, but, yeah, full of flavour, I think. And, I mean, Moveda is Spanish. Would you say you're bringing a lot of um, of Spanish flavours to Bistro Livy? Um, yeah, like I, I, yeah, we were trying not to box ourselves into any particular cuisine, um, but it's, we're sort of just saying abroad, sort of European in style and, um, but I guess it's, you know, having spent 11 years in Movida, it's, um, you know, a little bit in the. DNA to sort of drift towards jamon and anchovies and paprika and things like that in the, in the cooking. But yeah. 
So you and I mean, it's obviously going to be pretty different working in Moveda, you know, a, a city restaurant to a regional restaurant. What are, you know, what's the difference in terms of pace and audience and the way that you put a menu together? Do you have to do things very differently? Um, I guess like we've just been doing food that we would want to do, whether we're in the city or country. Um, definitely. The pace is different. Um, we, you know, Wednesday, Thursday are a little bit quieter up here and then the weekend is going really gangbusters, whereas I guess in the city, you know, you sort of can be pretty consistent all through the week. Um, but, no, we're just trying to, like, stick to our guns, I guess, and do the food that we, Danny and myself want to do. And, um, yeah, and so far, so good. I think we've had really good um, – it's been received – really well and um yeah yeah we're sort of getting busier each week so that's really positive and um yeah the town has been very supportive and it's not just yeah people coming from other places it's we're getting a lot of locals through and which is yeah that's what we're kind of really after yeah it's a place that people can come you know fortnightly or yeah it's accessible yeah, it sounds, sounds really good. I mean, it's so important, I suppose, when you're in a region, I guess you want those that visitor trade, but to be anchored in community, I suppose that's that's always going to be what you need, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, I think we're building into that nicely and um, I think Mwollomba, um yeah, it's got so much potential. It's a busy little town and it's not far from sort of some major centres and, um, yeah, it's beautiful sort of lots of Art Deco buildings and, um, yeah, there's a good mix of sort of farming and um, people who have moved there and young families and, um, yeah, people come up from the city and, yeah, I think it's just going to keep growing and we've got some, yeah, great great neighbours in our little precinct and, um Beautiful cheese shop around the corner, Cat Harvey, and um, lovely cafe just up the road, Keese, and um, guys from Woodland Valley Farm are putting in a pasta shop just up the road. So, yeah, that's a lot to be excited about in regional town. Mm, that does sound, sound so appealing. And I'm sure, you know, leaning into that community was enormously important when the floods came through can you can you talk about the lead up to that period and and what it was like to see water come into a room that you'd so recently fitted out um yeah so we finished work on a saturday night and um it had been raining pretty heavily and sort of you could see some parts of the town had flooded but they Usually do around there with not so much rain, so we didn't sink too much of it, and then got into Sunday, and you know it had been raining pretty heavily still, and we went down to the shop and did a bit of sandbagging, and um, I like putting some tarp. <laughs> We're possibly a little bit naive um, about yeah how much rain was. On, on the way and, yeah, we spoke to some other people who said that the last time it flooded only maybe 10 or centimetres went through the tenancy. So we have sort of, yeah, um, kept going about our business and did that. And then, yeah, the Monday by Monday morning, um, the water had kept rising and... Um, Monday afternoon, Tuesday, yeah, the um, water was above the sort of bank where the built-in seating was, about a metre a meter up. Um, so, yeah, from a, a metre, 1,200 um, down, we lost everything, fridges, freezers, banquettes, seating, um, tables, yeah. The cool room was on its, on its side and... Um, yeah, all our stock and, um, yeah, and then we could get in there. So it started on a Saturday. We got in there on a on a Wednesday and sort of started the process of cleaning up and then, 
yeah, just people from the community and other businesses descended and helped us rip everything out and clear the mud away and hose everything out. It was, um, yeah, really inspirational to see the, the, the help that we, we got and, you know, we hadn't been there long and yeah. So, um, yeah, it was, we have a lot of gratitude to the people around who helped us sort of clean it up and then, um, yeah, we just sort of had to uh, wait after that initial few days and then the we got a whole heap of industrial dryers and things to dry the space out and then, yeah, it all got sort of patched together pretty quickly and um, the equipment, new equipment came back and, um, yeah, and five weeks later, so April the 6th, we, we were off and racing again. So, yeah. And, <laughs> well, you you make it sound like a very neat sort of narrative, but I, I just can't imagine the feeling of, um, you know, seeing these optimistic sandbags or just you know somewhere down there as the water came through. I mean, what did it what did it feel like to to you know see your business, your baby, like this? Well, we we couldn't um, we couldn't get down to the um, town to see it. So once sort of Sunday afternoon um, had come by, we were stuck um, at the house and we just, yeah, just listening to the rain all through the night. Um, yeah, starting to get worried, obviously. Um, yeah, good bit of 15 hours of flat out rain. Um, and then we just got snippets of video from people who were in town saying um, this is where it's at and we were like oh, okay we can you know it was only up to the, the bottom of the banquette and then we just sort of the news kept filtering in through the day about um, <laughs> you know, how, how far under it was um, I guess where you know we didn't cop it as bad as Lismore and all those other places and a lot of other people were dealing with a lot more than us. So we just tried to stay as positive as we could and um, sort of just get on with it um, when when we could, yeah. yeah. And did your insurance cover the losses? Yeah, they did, yep. So we were very lucky. Um, our, we were umming and ahhing about flooding and flood insurance and our other business partner, um, Rob, he just said it's a, it's a no-brainer and we got it. And, um, yeah, they were pretty quick in the initial bit and got us some funds so we could sort of get equipment back and sort of get open. And then, yeah, we got a um, – took a, you know, five months and then we were able to get the, the last of it and, um, yeah, just get it back to where it was in January. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's a that's a good. It's good to have a good news story about insurance. I mean, as you're rebuilding, I mean, what do you? How do you sort of process the idea of the next flood and you know dealing with it again? Um, obviously, it's yeah, um, a hot topic, and um, we have sort of, as a business, sort of talked about having a flood plan and. Um, you know, we, we sort of know whether the water came in at this sort of size flood. So um, getting the things out that um, we can, because all the banquettes, they just bolted in. So we could pull those out and the fridges and stuff we could have pulled out, but we just didn't think that there was going to be that much water. And um, so we just have a um, somewhere to take it in higher ground and, um, things, the walls have been resheeted with different materials, so they should um, be okay if water came another time. But, yeah, fingers crossed none of that happens. I'm not sure that we could cope. <laughs> well, I hope you don't need to, but I think it's, I mean, as you say, it's a hot topic and I feel like, you know, these one in 100-year floods that happen a few months apart in, you know, in that part of the world, it's um, it's uh, it's probably very wishful thinking to uh, to think that it won't happen again. Yeah, 
Yeah. You and let's let's track back and talk about your journey as a chef. I mean, what was it that um, that took you into the industry in the first place? Um, wanted to get out of school. Uh, this is probably a lot of um, young yeah chefs. Uh, my dad is um, a good cook and interested in food, and was always very creative at home. I guess and trying lots of things from around the world when we were younger and I guess that piqued my interest and um, I did a few work experience things when I was younger and sort of, yeah, when I got to, yeah, didn't want to do higher education. So I, yeah, started an apprenticeship um, in, I'm from um, Country WA originally, um, Albany down in the Southwest, beautiful part of the world. And, um, yeah, so I did a apprenticeship down there and then um, went travelling for a bit and um, decided that Melbourne was the um, where I sort of wanted to be and did a little stint at the press club when I um, first got there to Melbourne and um, and then, yeah, and then the chunk of my learnings uh, were at Movida and Movida Aki and then sort of... Um, did a bit with Frank at Bartini when that first opened and then um, back to my Vita original for the last sort of three years um, before we moved up here. So, yeah, that was that's my... Um... And then when we got to Northern Rivers, I helped out at um, La Casita with Josh and Astrid there and um, did a six months at their pop-up um, doing the ramen um, down in Bruns where the fleet site is and uh, that was great fun with um, Daiki and yeah and then sort of at Christmas time we sort of just focused on getting Libby open yeah but my time at movie wow. um, yeah it was just incredible and Frank's a, an amazing chef and human um yeah they, they were really supportive of me over the years and helped me yeah sort of work my way up the up the ladder there and um yeah thanks um yeah it's a very good cook well the, la the last two times that i've seen frank kimura the founder of moveda it's been at culinary colleges so I saw him at William Anglis where he'd spent the day there cooking with the students and preparing um a, a basically a Movida menu there um it was really extraordinary to see I guess you know some kids are going to you know get lit up by an experience like that more than others but I, th and I but I think there's so many there were so many eyes on him and there was such um respect and um wonder at watching you know these dishes come together it was it was really really heartening especially in a time where you know we know we need so many um people coming through the industry and the most recent time that i saw him was just the other night it was at box hill um institute uh where frank himself had actually studied cooking back in the day and he was back there alongside guy grossi and ian curley and we were all part of a, a fundraising dinner for a student hardship fund and again it was just really it was just really heartening you know frank had donated his time as had the other guys um and just to to be there i guess giving back to the industry being that that mentor and that leader i mean um does that sound characteristic of the guy that you know as well yeah absolutely and like they've been doing the great chef dinners for years and stuff at william anglis and yeah they've always sort of been big big supporters and um you know taken on um apprentices and train people up and yeah it's a testament to frank and that a lot of staff have stayed for um such a long period of time yeah it's just a good culture and um yeah people can see um there's room to grow and there'll be opportunities and there would sort of not just yeah sitting back there what? yeah or, what do you take forward um, now that you're a business owner? I mean, what do you take forward from that experience into your own business? Yeah, we would love to, um, as we get busier, um, 
expand and be able to take on apprentices. I think that's our next our next step. And at the moment, it's just Danny and myself in the kitchen, and um, we have um, yeah somebody to help out um, great young kids helping out on the dishes and stuff like that. But yeah, our next step is definitely to take an apprentice on board and um, yeah help somebody grow and see if they're passionate about the industry yeah yeah but we've got um nikki's got some great people out the front as well and young um young person who really keen to learn and yeah yeah that's it's nice yeah it's it's so good to hear because um you know everyone is struggling for staff i mean do you feel like there is a sort of enthusiasm that you can tap into when, when it's the right time to take on those apprentices? Yep. Yep. We've had some, um, we've had inquiries already and we're just, we're not ready as a business, but, um, yeah. Um, uh, it's yeah, really positive. It's positive that we'll be able to find some good, good help when, when it's needed. Yeah. Yep. Mm, so good. Really, I'm really excited to hear that. I mean, if so, if if like someone came to you, they're like, oh, I'm not sure, you know, about the right pathway. I don't know. I'm sort of interested in food. I mean, how would you sell hospitality to them? Um, oh, look, if you if you're passionate, it'll give back in spades. I think um, if you if it's what if you've decided it's what you want to do, then yeah, if you give it at all, it's it's, um, it's a you know, it, it's a great career. You get to travel, you get to be creative, um, you get to work with lots of wild and wonderful people, and yeah, I think it, it's it's hard, but it's yeah, a very rewarding industry. Yeah, um, and you and. Uh, I'm looking forward to coming up to um, to Livy. Tell me, what would you feed me if I came if I came later this week? Um, so, we've just been getting amazing um, wild shot um, venison from up here. Um, so we'll be doing something with that this week. Um, beautiful um, spanner crab in. Um, curry butter. Um, it's snapper season, so there'll be some snapper with fermented chili dressing, um, and there's always plates of anchovies and maybe a bit of hamon kicking around. So, yeah, some house-made butter and bread. Yeah, I think you can go wrong, really. That sounds all so good. I would definitely smash. Everything you've just mentioned. What about for dessert? Um, so I guess we've got one mainstay at the moment, which is um, set cream, and um, that's got some local honey and Merlot vinegar over the top. And yeah, we've got some other. We just roll through a bit of like chocolate cake or um, coffee granita, um, some sorrel sorbet. Um, yeah, things like that. But the set cream is the, is the go-to that sort of people, yeah, we haven't been able to take it off yet. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I would not let you take it off either. It sounds so good. <laughs> um, Ewan, um, so great to have a chance to chat to you, hear a bit more about what you're doing and, and the journey that's taken you there. I really appreciate your time and, yeah, wish you all the best um, in Willembar and Bistro Livy. Um, yeah, congratulations on the, the success you've achieved so far. I'm sure there's a lot more to come. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having me. This is Dirty Linen and I'm Danny Vallant. We air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about, hearing from different people with unique perspectives. We want to hear from you as well. If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you. This.